Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is uh, October 2nd, uh, 2022. Howard, you're finally back. I am home. The market can begin the bottoming process. Yeah, they can. I mean, actually... Or they could crash. <laughs> so uh, I used to have like shoes with the name Nobu, like N O. B U L L Noble. Yeah, Instagram. They're like an Instagram brand. Yeah, and yesterday someone stole those shoes from me. So there's gotta be a bottoming, bottoming signal. <laughs> I am. Uh, I really uh, learned a lot from my month away. People were very respectful of the work. You let me take a week off. Um, we didn't really miss much. I think if we'd done a show last week, we'd just said get the fuck out of the market. Um, and I think. Uh, or you would have, you probably were short last week, I imagine. I um, didn't do much. I was mostly in cash. Like I was yeah. watching mostly. All right. So, so, so catch us up. I, I am completely, you know, I, I will summarize my feelings by saying the narrative for the first time that I can imagine is worse than the sentiment. You know, usually the sentiment gets bad, you know, in March of 2020, the world was ending. Uh, people, the, the media wasn't so much focused on stocks. Stocks were crashing, but there was other problems. This time it feels like everybody's watching the market. So the narrative is super negative, but I don't feel like people are selling. You know, Apple still double where it was. Um, I just don't feel people have like given us that like give up moment. So tell me how you feel about things here. I mean, <clears throat> the S&P made new new year to, year to date lows last week. It finally tested its summer lows. It went below them. It closed below them. And a lot of distribution the last week too. A lot, a lot of, of distribution. Look at those big red uh, yeah. volume bars. Yeah. So definitely there's some professional selling, probably, probably forced liquidations. There's a rumor circling around that pension funds has, have gotten into well, some they're not rumors. carry uh, trades. On these the wrong are, side of carry trades. Real, these are real things peaking yeah. their head. Remember, pension yeah. funds, let me explain something. Pension funds, in hindsight, it's obvious. Banks figure out ways to blow things up. They have been creating products for pension funds to bet on rates staying low because there was yeah. negative interest rates, right? And now, as no one could expect, and this is what markets do, uh, rates haven't just gone up, they've exploded to the upside. So these pension funds are getting huge capital calls on these derivatives that they created around having low interest rates. Okay, so this is not possibly a problem. The only question is how big the problem is. So this is the stuff that's headed to page one that isn't quite on page one that will create good or bad the sentiment that we need to create some sort of bottom. This has to do with Credit Suisse. This has to do with the other banks, JP Morgan, uh, uh, Deutsche Bank, all the banks that have been somehow around the world creating derivatives for pension funds uh, in a low yield environment. This full stop. And it's just breaking news last week. So, so what I worry about are the people hiding out in these triple leveraged ETFs. Same thing. It's not so much about the Nasdaq 100. It's about what's how many people are hiding out in TQQQ and ROM, these leveraged products that they volumes accelerating, but the VIX is only 30. And if the VIX gets above 40 here, these things could shut down, and especially with Credit Suisse ready to go out of business. Anything is possible and uh, definitely the things that are going to break this market will be different than the ones that broke it last time. It's it's always the same story. It's always a different reason. Uh, but as you said, there's <clears> definitely <throat> some professional forced selling going on. And when that's happening, it's really hard to pick up stocks, no matter how discounted you, you might think they are. Yeah. Uh, it has gotten to a situation where the Fed might start worrying more about financial stability than about inflation. As you know, uh, after the close on Friday, they announced that there will be an emergency FOMC meeting oh. on Monday. Oh, uh, I did not. I've been traveling, so so that's interesting. Yeah, so I mean that they're not going. They're not having another meeting to raise interest rates. Surprisingly, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I mean, I, again, it's too obvious to say how bad they've been. I just, I don't want to waste an hour. Everybody's now a Fed and macro expert. I'm just a price watcher. And I'm horrified by how clueless anybody that watches prices forget. That is the data that matters. Prices, yeah. uh, that summarizes everything that's going on in markets. I don't understand how you could continually raise rates. Again, maybe we needed to, but at the pace that they've done it, when no one has had time to digest what it's going to mean, we're at a complete standstill in real estate markets. We're at a complete standstill in uh, the bond markets. And um, wow, what is that? That's the real estate? Yeah, this is the REITs uh, oh ETF. It so is that's like to be down stable, 40%. Yeah. It's in free fall. Yeah, of course. I mean, when you have treasuries yielding 4%, of course, anything high dividend is going to fall, and especially connected to real estate. So it's okay. Well, that's on my list. IYR both... then on my list. XLU and IYR are on my list. If they both see in the sixties this week, I mean, I'm not going to be buying Apple. I'm going to be buying uh, utilities and real estate indexes. Um, these are crash scenarios already. So if they have a whoosh down, um, wow. I mean, I don't know what the Fed was thinking that was going to happen. Um, I haven't really looked beyond tech stocks, which seem to just be in a slow meltdown. They don't seem to be in this type of meltdown. I mean, it depends. Like, Apple wasn't really that slow. Uh, as every, it's everyone's staple stock. Why can't right? this be an $80 stock in a bad It week? could be. It could be 100 Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, um, and that's about where I would be. That would be my first instance you know, in the 80s with this. Okay. No, nowhere near a buy here. Yeah. I mean, at this point, correlations are so high that when they bottom, they're going to bottom together. Yeah. So, and they're going to bounce together. So uh, when that happened, like I rather own something that is high beta, it's going to deliver yeah. better results than something like yeah. XLU, which is low beta. But that's just me. It just Good depends point. on your time horizon. Good point. Um, so last week, we heard that Bank of England had to step up and buy their treasuries, like English treasuries, because the interest rates were uh, going yeah, super... buying them, Ivan, at the same time they're about to raise a point and a half. So it's like fake news in that that makes no sense. If you're going to raise rates, don't step in to save the market. Like, I, I don't get it. Like, well, they had to. They had to, to save some of their financial institutions. And it seems all of that interest rates raising is going to lead to a point where central banks around the world will have to step up and start buying treasuries again. Oh so it will be another round of QE at some point, maybe next year, maybe earlier. So yeah, but people have hindsight bias. I don't think what people understand this time around. I mean, sorry, I hope I'm wrong. Let's just full, full, full stop. Like I'm 57. I don't have to be, I don't have to create, I don't have that luckily uh, uh, find a market bottom to to survive okay but it is this is what we do okay the difference this time is that people have been hit over the head on the buy that this is the first time in uh, since 08 that people have been hit over the head with buy the dip at least in tech okay um there is recency bias here people won't be as quick to just, and if they do step in the buy, there'll be a lot of flipping going on. So we're gonna, it's gonna take some real fundamental news to turn this around right now. This isn't about the Fed's flipping. And this is really about how poorly um, run these central agencies are. And really uh, they may be doing crypto the biggest favor here. Like, you know, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's not like crypto is a buy here, but like if you ever wanted to create a story for, uh, decentralized money, um, you're creating it. I think relative to everything else, Bitcoin's probably doing great the last month. Yeah, definitely. The past week and a half, definitely stabilizing. Uh, typically when the QQQ has been weak, Bitcoin has been weaker, but not in the last week or so. So it seems like if this is the, the future path, when it seems to be that there'll be more QE coming up, yeah. Probably gold and Bitcoin are the ones to to benefit. That's what I'm I'm you know talking to my the managers that we've allocated to in, in crypto and, and, and 
you know, there's an obvious relative strength. Again, it's very short-term relative strength that we're finally seeing here in crypto. It's not like I'm rushing out to, to add more long-term exposure to crypto, but um, we're at some point of breaking point. It doesn't matter now how many emergency meetings we have. The unintended consequences of rates going from zero to four, one-year T-bills going from zero to four, uh, are set in motion, right? Just like COVID set off things in motion. And now it's up to us, you and me and, and investors to think through what will come out of this as growth. Obviously, nuclear, I keep talking about, obviously, climate type things. Is there anything in, anything that you're seeing showing relative strength? I mean, the one sector that's really standing out is, is biotech. I mean, obviously, yeah. the sector as a whole is still in a downtrend. Yeah. But just compare it to the S&P, which just closed the new year-to-day lows. It's just pretty far from its uh, year-to-day lows. And we're starting to... It's just 30% like, above lows. Got it. Okay. From individual stocks in biotech. <clears throat> but they're just showing up on the 52-week high list. I mean, obviously, if there is more forced liquidation, those stocks are going to wow. get hit. But overall, like the basis... Technically, what we're seeing is mostly treatment of cancer. Okay, so cancer. They're, yeah. they're in biotech, so definitely there have been some amazing discoveries in the sector, and those stocks have been accum been accumulated. Hey, can you do, uh, okay, so hang on. This is going to put up. This is inflammatory bowel, which is a huge problem, uh, not just because of the markets. Hang on. So this is PRXDX. Okay, sorry, that is incredible. So it went public uh, last year. Uh, people want to own this. Okay, so there, so there you go. So, so now yeah, there's, there's quite a few of them. It's not just one or two. Hellas AP. Uh, will you share these, Ivan, in your note? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, of course. AP, I'll mention some of them. Yeah. 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 A, what is the symbol on this one? AP. APLS, oh. like apples, but with S. Yeah. yeah. And this is does inflammatory diseases. Got it. Okay. I mean, there's so many of them, as I said. It's just... Uh... Okay, well, there you go. We know where yeah. the money is going to flow. People, you know, this goes... Yeah. This is tech meets life meets uh, quality of life. So so there is going to be a bull market, and it's going to be around alternative energy, climate, uh, and... Now, it's so interesting, Ivan, and I hate saying the word climate because it immediately, uh, but I meant, I, I, I was with, you know, I'm going to have mommy podcast. I was with a, a really smart kid, um, uh, Dave Finocchio. And Dave, of all people, he is, he's a Saban. He's in his early 40s. He started um, Bleacher Report. I don't know if you if you follow sports sites, Ivan, but, you know, maybe 15 years ago, he started Bleacher Report was one of the very first he was in college when he started and he enlisted kids you can't do this anymore as interns to write content around like long tail sports things anyways it got bought by turner and he started a new uh thing right now around climate uh aimed at not at inflammatory like headlines but it's called um oh my goodness but he's taking the same excitement that he had around like long tail sports and applying it to common it's called the last and so he's not writing these freaky headlines he's trying to appeal to both sides by saying you know climate affects fishing climate affects kayaking climate ex, you know affects mm -hmm. skiing climate. and and to really build up communities around really what matters is like hey man like we could argue about left right whatever but it's time to start talking about all the real things that are happening with climate, you know, less snow, uh, more volatile uh, rivers, uh, the things that both sides, uh, you know, things that both sides do that are affected by climate. So, so, so some of the smartest, it's not just about changing the climate, it's about, you know, conversation and community. So, um, I don't think it's as simple as investing in a clean energy ETF that you're showing here, Ivan. I think this is really such a, a unique time in, in both building community, content, media. Because uh, every article I've read about, honestly, from the Atlantic to, the, to, to Fox is, you know, it's either the headline is storm because of climate change or, you know, like it's, it's so polarizing. Um, but anyways, the biotech stuff that you just showed is, is fascinating. You've been talking about this for two, three months. Um, 
this is all about the relevance. I mean, it's their turn. If you remember, after the, yeah. there was a pretty big correction in 2011, 2010, 2011, uh, when the market didn't really go anywhere for like a year and a half and uh, small caps thing went down 30, 40%. And out of that correction, the biotech was the new star. And then from 2011 to, to 2013, 14, Let's pull, pull, pull there. look at this trend here. Biotech was the leading stock for, for a few years. So there were some, a lot of biotech stocks went up like 500, 1,000% during and that. Is, all they've done is digest it now for five, six years, right? So they... Or, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, basically six, seven years of sideways. So really, yeah, so really that trend is just has been digested. It didn't, it, that parabolic move really only led to a 30, 40% pullback. Uh, if we're lucky, that's what the NASDAQ, that's what will happen with the NASDAQ. A couple of things we know in looking at the queues um, is that the game is rigged, right? The Fed is politicized. I've been saying that for a while. Ben, um, I apologize. People that have been on my podcast have talked about this. But the, the one good news is this is rigged um, at some point. Uh, they will cut rates because debt is being paid in U.S. dollars. And, and, and again, like, I don't know. Obviously, bad policy can be stacked on top of bad policy. So there's always that, like, outlier event that you can't just blindly buy the debt. But um, we're getting to the point where you, you seasonally, too, where there should be a good rally. I want to be more positive like I was in March 2020 when it was just screaming panic and brands were being on sale but like I don't see it this time look at McDonald's they're just breaking down yeah right. McDonald's Nike is um, down what, Nike like 65%. just percent yeah Insane. well McDonald's is just breaking down Nike we're back at 2015 prices so at some point in the next 90 days I can see myself adding Nike back to my portfolio it's not going anywhere but it was quite obvious to me when I sold it in the low 100s that this is these things, you know, when I got rid of McDonald's, it's like, I don't see how we don't have a spike down here. They can't just continue to be the only ones that survive. But, you know. They should benefit during recession, though. So they should saying, benefit, but to a point, yeah. Ivan, they have benefit. They haven't gone down and they're stealing market share, no doubt. But uh, the valuation is still unbelievably high for um, McDonald's. And it's been a perfect and this is true for They most should be affected by yeah. real estate too, Ivan. They're going to be affected by real yeah, estate. Yeah, exactly. Too. What you say about valuation is really true for many companies, even for Nike, because yes, they're down 50, 55%. But valuation-wise, they're still trading at a pretty hefty multiple. And we know that in bear markets, multiples contract, they go down, especially if we have a prolonged bear market where you know people can kind of depress, we may see those P ratios, you know, half from here. So even if a company's earnings didn't really go down or even go sure, up, this could be a forty dollars stock just based on PE. That's what yeah. people have to understand. Yes, these 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 initial fifty percent move downs are based on uh, a change in narrative. The next fifty percent down could just be based on fact of fundamentals and interest rates. Absolutely. Sentiment, basically, yeah. Yeah. And, and true fundamentals, which is, hey, it should trade at a 15 PE or and, and it can overshoot to a 10 PE if we really are in a prolonged bear market. Again, hopefully this is the bottom, but it doesn't feel like stocks like Nike are just going to bounce back like they did in 2020 because um, the uh, world is definitely a different place. Um, the travel stocks still a mess, right? Like if we look at like Carnival, and they're just getting destroyed yeah look at this uh, you, know, you know they huff and they puff and they can't you say, i don't know where the all-time high all-time low <laughs> yeah where, basically yeah these are zeros in my opinion where's the uh um, see, booking just breaking down potentially yeah where's the indian one mmyt you know that was holding up very well no. yeah it's not that bad actually i mean compared to this is a monthly so let's look at weekly so yeah. It's so just... again, there is some strength out there. Um, uh, India, I think, would be a, you know a place that's not my on my interest radar. I just don't have enough knowledge. Okay, let's but see. It looks yeah. like you're right about biotech. Is there anything besides biotech that's showing any relative strength? I think the transportations have ruled over. That's it. Biotech is the main one uh, that is standing out in terms of relative strength. Um, really, this is the one. Even. Uh, climate change stocks have started to uh, 
I mean, not really break down, but really pull back to their 200 day moving average. And I can definitely see them at some point try. I mean, first solar is definitely the leader. Look at it just going sideways while the market is getting absolutely mm -hmm. crushed. <laughs> so, and still getting accumulated. So this, this is definitely one of the future leaders. I don't know why yeah. it seems like it's just, just a generic product what they're offering, but price-wise is definitely probably one of the strongest stocks currently in the market, but just being yeah, able to a, hold. I saw one of my old favorites, Taser, it's kind of going sideways, Axon, it's it's holding its Excellent. level. Okay. Um, but again, still, you know, there's no reason to buy these, but again, way off its lows. Uh, so again, we got to own relative strength here if you're going to add new money. I, just, I, I do feel like some of these past leaders that I own, you know, I'm not selling them here down 50% anymore because I want some market exposure, but the world has definitely changed. I think Amazon, you can see it's it's probably going to break. I mean, Drucker Miller is saying that, you know, in a bad case scenario, we might have like a sideways market for, for 10, 15 years. And I was going to pull up, I say Dow Jones composite. Let's see. Which means the market cap, the leaders, the it means like the big companies would go sideways, right? I think small caps would probably. I mean, there were some, you know, quite a few rallies during that time that he's referring to uh, that sideways era from sixty five to to eighty two, during that you know high inflationary period, high interest rates, uh, you know, low growth. There were quite a few rallies. This is a monthly chart. Uh, mm -hmm and declines but you know for a passive investor it was like 15 years of nothing and then high inflation so at the end of the day the purchasing power of your money is even you know getting destroyed here if you're just owning uh, an index yeah so if he's right maybe active investing in, and trading will be will become more popular in the next decade who knows we don't know, we don't uh, know. but this is just a thesis yeah, this has been a yeah. market. I think we we've done a good job of at least telling people this for the last six to eight months preserve capital. I think we're getting to a market where if you wanted to take some chances, yeah. you start seeing some some clear strength in biotech. Um, and but that's it, you know. So, as of right now, and as I said, these are such a tiny stocks that you know they can go down twenty percent in a day. If yeah, something happens in the market. So, yeah. but definitely. It seems like that when the markets bounce, you know, it might be just a, another 20, 30% bear market bounce. It seems like biotech is going to outperform. Yeah, 100% gains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And lead. So. Certain energy as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. All right, buddy. Have a great week. We'll be back next week, everybody. Hopefully this helps. And we'll share some of these names to uh, keep an eye on. Yeah, sure. All right. See you guys.